Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is to come. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, escorted by all the angels, then he will take his seat on the throne of glory. All the nations will be assembled before him, and he will separate men, one from another, as the shepherd separates sheep from goats. He will place the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you whom my father has blessed, take for your heritage the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you made me welcome. Naked, and you clothed me. Sick, and you visited me. In prison, and you came to see me. Then the virtuous will say to him in reply, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and make you welcome, naked and clothe you, seek her in prison and go to see you? And the king will answer, I tell you solemnly, in so far as you did this to one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did it to me. Next he will say to those on his left hand, Go away from me with your curse upon you to the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you never gave me food. I was thirsty, and you never gave me anything to drink. I was a stranger, and you never made me welcome. Naked, and you never clothed me. Sick, and in prison, and you never visited me. Then it will be their turn to ask, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, a stranger or naked, sick or in prison, and did not come to your help? Then he will answer, I tell you solemnly, in so far as you neglected to do this to one of the least of these, you neglected to do it to me. And they will go away to eternal punishment and the virtuous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> Welcome once again to this celebration of Sunday Mass and thank you for joining. The Feast of Christ the King is the final Sunday of the church year. Next Sunday we begin a new year with the season of Advent, leading to the celebration of Christmas. This final Sunday of the church's liturgical year does perhaps invite us to pause and reflect 
as we reflect on the year since this time last year, and particularly since March, our lives have been dominated by the COVID pandemic, mental fatigue, exhaustion and anxiety, maybe even spiritual weariness all abound. And while there are some signs of hope, the end may not be so near. In 1925, the year the foundation stone of our church was laid, the Feast of Christ the King was instituted by Pope Pius XI. It was instituted in the immediate aftermath of the First World War, when totalitarianism was on the rise. Pope Pius XI said that Christ the King must reign in our minds, he must reign in our wills, he must reign in our hearts, in our bodies, and in our souls. In other words, Christ the King must reign supreme. We find two particular ideas around the kingship of Christ in the readings, the king shepherd and the king judge. The prophet Ezekiel rails against the shepherds of Israel because they have failed in their duty to shepherd the flock. They have looked after their own needs rather than looking after the needs of the sheep. The Lord, through the prophet Ezekiel, declares that he will keep his sheep in view and rescue them from wherever they have been scattered during the mist and darkness. The false shepherds will no longer shepherd the people. God himself will be the true shepherd to them. This prophecy of Ezekiel is wonderfully fulfilled in the person of Jesus who declares in the Gospel of John, I am the good shepherd and I lay down my life for my sheep. Jesus, the Son of God, is the true shepherd who looks for the lost one, brings back the stray, bandages the wounded and makes the weak strong. And the shepherding work of Jesus is the shepherding pastoral ministry of the church today in which all the baptized are called to participate, caring for the other with the heart of Christ. In the gospel, we find the image of Jesus, the king who is judge. There is a judgment when the Son of Man comes in glory, he who sits at the right hand of the Father, and there will be a separation, and some will go to eternal punishment, and the virtuous to eternal life. Despite our sins, our frailties, and human weaknesses, each of us desires to be counted among the virtuous. It is hard to imagine anybody wanting anything other than eternal life. The divine judgment in the Gospel of Matthew is on recognizing or not the person of Jesus in the hungry, the thirsty, the stranger, the naked, the sick, and the imprisoned. In so far as you did this to the least of these brothers of mine, you did it to me. In so far as you neglected to do this to one of the least of these, you neglected to do it to me. Loving Christ in the poor is an imperative. When we neglect the poor, we neglect Christ. There are echoes here of the commands to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself. Also echoes of St. John who says we cannot love God whom we cannot see if we do not love our neighbor whom we can see. The Christian calling is a calling of love, love of God and love of neighbor. Jesus, the Son of God, is the shepherd king who cares for the sheep. He is the king judge who judges with justice and with mercy. 
the feast of Christ the King points to the fulfillment of the kingdom of God when the reign of God will be established in all its fullness to the ends of the earth. Christ the King leads us into Advent when the church anticipates the second coming of Christ. Jesus Christ is Lord. He is King. He is the Son of God. When did we see you? The question people ask before the judgment seat in the gospel. When did we see you? Let us open our eyes and see. Let us interpret what we see and let us act with mercy in faithful love of God and neighbor.